much like the Athe, or Athame, the dagger that is used in ritual magic is essentially an extension of yourself. It's an extension of your will and the focus of your mental energy. It's a tool. That's all it is. While you can imbue objects with energy, spiritual power, um, perhaps even bind demons or a part of your own energy to serve this as a conduit later over time. This is still just a tool. The power is in will, desire, belief, your determination, your focus. Elements, specifically the air, with the athame, athame, is used to focus and call forth and concentrate and encircle specific types of energy. This particular athame I've had for over 10 years now, and a simple purchased one um, carried through my company, Luciferian Apotheca, many years ago. This was consecrated to Lilith in my nocturnal nightside sabbatic and infernal union workings, clopothic, etc. But it's focused towards the motivating, the inspiring energy, the force of Lilith as muse, as one, the queen that joins with the king and becomes the adversary, Samael, Lilith. But a well-learned and practiced and insightful and experienced Luciferian or magician will learn. And the sooner you understand this, the easier it will be towards whatever journey upon the path of initiation you're taking is you can take all of these things away have nothing, zero tools other than your imagination, your mind. You can do that and you can still with will, desire, belief, with the imaginal that I explain and go into in my book, Whispers of the Jinn and Lilith and Lamashtu, my latest grimoire, the use of the mind and your ability to use imagination to imbue specific focus points with that energy, that shows your initiation, your elevation upon the path towards the triad of the morning star. I'm going to talk really briefly about something called, which if you've read my books, I explain this in many different, and it's a source from uh, the Greco-Roman and Hellenistic periods. Uh, but it goes back much further in other surrounding Mediterranean, ancient Near Eastern cultures, is Vokes Magic, Magic. And those are the secret words of ancient magic. Vokes magic or magical voices or names of power are words or names that have specific almost subconscious meaning when read or viewed without context seem like gibberish or some type of barbaric 
primal kind of utterance Vox Magicae or Voces Magicae is a very important uh, it's a tool in which words would often be sourced from deity names spirit names, demon names from different cultures especially in the Greco-Roman Hellenistic period and they would be from Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Syrian, uh, Aramaic, Judaic, Hebrew, Greek, and they would be combined focusing on a specific type of energy or power that when vibrated and recited during a invocation or type of ritual working or spell would be an activating energy that calls and grants the magician the power to direct this energy. It can be used internally or externally in vibrating words, words of power. The word, the thing that uh, is kind of the joke, uh, abracadabra, that comes from Coptic, Greco-Roman, Egyptian magical workings. Uh, it's a word of that. That is a vocus magicae. But the earliest known Hellenistic um, vocus magicae or magical words were the uh, Phesian letters in Asia Minor, found on a base of a statue first of uh, Artemis the great goddess and these words were specific types of sigil energies that if you study a little bit you can find meanings in the etymology the roots of the words but these names were very inspiring and utilized in all types of uh, theurgy and different types of ceremonial magic and sorcery in the ancient world. Uh, askion, kataskion, lix tetrax, damnaneus, and ayasum. Now, if you've read the um, early, early grimoire written in the storm of a, a, in the form of a myth or a story, uh, or looks like horror fiction, is the Testament of Solomon. That's actually a reflection of types of spirits that were invoked, demons, deities, reflecting magical workings of the first to fourth or fifth century common era types of practices that are known from other records but the testament of solomon was written in the form of king solomon and the biblical legends hebrew legends of building the temple using jinn demons but lix tetrax if you have my book the demons of solomon I write extensively and reveal much about that, but that those two uh, Ephesian letters, names, are the name of a demon or powerful spirit in Solomonic, Goetic, black magic. A demon, a, a force of not only nature, but a kind of chaos that can be, for a time, encircled and directed towards internal transformation, change, and lesser practices as well. Um, so the words that are found all throughout the, like the papyri, um, some of the Nag Hammadi library Gnostic works, uh, the, and surviving into the Grimoire tradition, um, 
and the Aramaic, Aramaic incantation bowls, among others, have this wealth and depth of names of power that if you have the context, the etymology and the context in its root form of the aim of the old spell, what names are invoked. And then if you know a little bit about the study of these languages to a very basic level and using the internet, you can find some of these now you'll understand that the deific mass with the energies that you're using and that you're calling upon for type of working. So you can reconstruct towards a modern aim uh, as a Luciferian, invoking these energies, honoring these names of power, these uh, deific masks, these demons, these deities of old, honoring them as respectfully as you would yourself but not submitting or deeply conversing in some fantasy that leads to uh, the depths of psychosis or self-destruction. The Luciferian is the vessel, the temple of the adversary. So your will must be in unison with the powers that you're calling. So you compel those. And that's why you start with my works. You start the laying the foundation of Luciferian philosophy so that as you begin to practice magic, if that's your path in that sense, in the ritualistic sense, then you will have the skills necessary and the strength to walk that path and compel, but equally honor and respect those spirits, powers, energies, demons, whatever you invest belief in their existence. Um, I can tell you things are more than symbols. Our associations and our the gift of consciousness and applied knowledge and the key formula of will, desire, belief whether it's psychodrama or some primal shamanistic uh, ritual or black witchcraft, whatever it is within Luciferianism, with your self-confidence and your validation, you will first set a path towards gradual self-transformation, becoming as a manifestation of the adversary, of a fallen angel, a what we understand as Lucifer, Satan, Lilith, uh, Hecate on a very direct, small level, a little piece of that, if you will. These are what um, the Vulcas Magicae represent. Um, there's one that works with Hecate or Hecate that invokes Actiforfis Areshkigal, Nabu Sohaleth, which these are vibrated in a pattern, in a rhythm. But Areshkigal is a, a, synchro, a syncretic throughout the uh, ancient world with Hecate, especially in the Hellenistic and Greco Roman. And, Coptic Christian Egyptian period. So when you, to summarize, when you look in my books and you see these names of power, I always usually give you an outline for the purpose of them. Earlier books, I would go into the etymology of countless names, but I found that if you just give the present, the foundation, the overall uh, concept and enough knowledge that can be embraced, then that's just as effective. So I hope that you can use names of power commanding in your, uh, in your magic, in your practices, whatever those may be, naming and commanding, compelling 
energy to cause that change or bring you into those experiences that you seek. I hope that you can use that and my works to greater effect.